How are we all? How's everyone doing? <sighs> Sorry, I was just a bit longer there. I was just, I was just talking with Tim. I'm just hiding my hair because it's just an absolute fucking nightmare today. Um, I was just having a chat with Tim. Tim arrives often when coffee morning is scheduled. I think he's, I think he's a sort of uh, secret, well not secret, but re real life attendee of coffee morning. When uh, hopefully distance restrictions are up, I'll have to bring him in and he'll have to give me my parcels in front of you guys. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Um, has anyone else uh, recovered from any family guests will be mindful um, of my Nutella fiasco last night. The empty tub is over there. So uh, yeah, it was a bad day. So I'm going to a meeting today. I mean, not literally because of the Nutella, but it, you, when you're in, uh, when you are in recovery, and I'm sure other people here, Tim, you'll, you'd agree, uh, you have to look for the other signs of where your behaviour is becoming a little bit out of control. And more recently, I've been using food to fix my emotions. Faith Goodman, hello, Mark, Nadia, Nanny Dai, Teddy, Betty and everyone, hello. Watch The Present on Netflix. Thanks, Mark and Nadia, for recommendation. Only a short film, very powerful. It is very powerful, and it's a short film about the, ex the, the low-level day-to-day, uh, low-level but high-impact experiences of being uh, a Palestinian in the uh, occupied territories. Um, so, uh, and you know what I liked about it was it even parks the thought that one of the Israeli soldiers who looks reluctant about the treatment of the Palestinians. So it's not just a sort of one-sided portrait. I think it's a fair humanistic, it's a humanistic portrait of a father and his daughter. So there we go. Uh, Zoe Shah, you're at the gym. Morning, watching you at the gym. Elijah's Mark got my card. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Yes, lots of you should be getting cards. A, a lot of foreign ones went out. I don't know how long they take to get to Canada and uh, Ireland um, and a couple in France and a couple in America. Uh, Aaron Bullimore, are you feeling any better today? Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't feel great at all yesterday. I, yeah, I'm good. I'm good today. I'm, I'm not great, but I'm okay. Um, uh, Nadia Kauser, I want a card. Uh, well, I'm sure that the, the ambition on the members area really is to eventually have got one to everyone, but we quite like the fun and frolics of, of us all trying to answer things to get them. Um, uh, Tina Levitt, good morning, please. Can I have a shout out? Been here for ages, never had a shout out. Tina Levitt, there you go. Uh, and there was someone else actually. I took a photograph of someone whose birthday it was. If you're here, was it Victoria? I'm trying to remember. I took a photo of it on my phone, but now I'm using my phone, so I'd have to terminate the, the live. Um, Delanix, uh, Delanix, yes, your card is absolutely on its way. Where's mine? Yeah, yours, Brenda, if yours is, uh, th th we don't have, I think we only have last week's, I think last week and perhaps the week before's still to go out. Um, Claire Smiley, have you not won a card yet? Oh dear. Well, I'm sure we can amend that when we do the members live later. Um, Steph Memhave, just watching whilst marking my, my work. Uh, Jess Edits, can I have a card? <laughs> oh, bless. You forgot to wish me happy birthday. Mask Kid Gaming, happy birthday. Mask Kid Gaming, happy birthday to you. Um, I hope you are or have had or are having a lovely, lovely birthday, Mask Kid Gaming. Uh, where can I listen to the Prince Harry? Well, the Prince Harry podcast is the armchair expert, isn't it? Um, I've just been, I've read the story. I've read the stories around it. So I've, I've only heard excerpts. I've only seen clips um, and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, but yeah, but can I just say, I got a, we got a lovely card here um, from an Amanda. Uh, and thank you very much. That's, it's a very, I won't share what's in it, but uh, it's a very meaningful message. And I'm really pleased that Confessions helped in, in that way for you. Um, uh, can't get a card because I can't do the quiz mark, Claire Smiley. Okay, well, maybe we'll do some random choosing uh, rather than just quiz, quiz questions. Uh, Mask Kid Gaming, thank you. I am a woman. I just turned 59. Thank you so much. Happy 59th. Um, morning, HW. Morning, Brenda McGee, Marcia Toms, Marie, Elena Paris. Hello, Mark, from sunny Valencia. I remember going to a couple of parties on the beach in the town of Valencia. Or the city of Valencia. Am I right in thinking that in the cathedral in Valencia, uh, they have what is reputed to be the uh, Holy Grail? I seem to remember filming there. I seem to remember filming, I must have filmed a festival there or something. Is there some sort of festivity in which they 
the Moors are represented, uh, the Arabs and the Spanish as fighting in a, in a street square. I'm pretty, pretty sure I filmed something there. Wow, Tom Cruise has been getting about, hasn't he? Filming in North North Yorkshire recently and then a Derbyshire quarry, Julienne. I've been wanting to go back to the Peak District for years since filming there. Uh, it's my birthday a week on Monday, so lots of notice for a shout at Tracy Gates, but do remind us on the day and do it with like big bold letters because so many, so many things go up quite quickly. And the last time we slowed the comments up, I think it frustrated everyone. Um, Becky Hicks's mum, Laura, wishing you a happy 60th birthday. Uh, Della Nixon. Oh, excuse me, just one sec. the culprit and the evidence that wasn't Tim obviously he hadn't come back uh, that was Tom that no, wasn't uh, Tim he's like a character in a sitcom isn't he, he just keeps coming out. it's just it's the devil's work it's the devil's work uh, Lucy Heaney, I've listened and Harry came across very well. He was down to earth and funny, but his constant complaining is tiresome at this point. That's interesting, very balanced. You, you know, you recognise that he's not, he's not annoying, but uh, you loved Mental Marky yesterday. I, I think another Mental Marky's coming today. He's, he's bemoaning the fact that he perhaps hasn't been thinking enough about Mental Health Week. But, um, yeah, I, you know, only in dreams do postmen give me uh, Nutella. Um... So, guys, how are we all? It's, it's Friday. It's Friday, Friday. It's that Friday feeling. What does that mean, Friday feeling? What is it? Make up the oh, Christ. What does Friday feeling mean? What does it mean? Oh, look, and also, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, I, I find this really fun. Look, there's six, six little irritants there. Come on, hit the thumbs up icon just to kind of diminish their, their joy. Just to diminish their joy on a Friday. Because you must be going into a Friday, into a weekend, feeling a bit sour, sour puss. If all you want to do is come onto a reasonably, you know, benign YouTube channel and unlike things. I mean, God help, help. Come on, guys. Come on. It does make me laugh. I mean, it truly makes me... It, I, I actually fear for them. I actually fear for them, especially the two new ones who just did it again. Um, Jane Bentley, Friday feeling nothing anymore. Jess said it's I clicked like, oh, bless you. Uh, Janine Amory, it's crunchy. What's crunchy? What does that mean? Oh, it's Friday feeling crunchy. Um, Erin Bullimore, mental health week can be so tedious. So much stuff on social media that, that is never brought up outside of mental health week. Yes, I agree. We were talking about that on Monday when it all kind of kicked off. You know, it's kind of important that it's not just sort of contained within this week. Um, and it's like, I mean, Mandy was talking about this a lot when the Black Lives Matter thing happens. It's like, if you've dealt with it in one post, it's somehow dealt with. And that doesn't mean you post incessantly about it, but the conversations need to carry on and the discussions need to talk. And in fact, that's exactly what Mental Mark is going to be talking about later today. Um, so, yes. Uh, catching you live for the first time in ages, Louise N. Hi, Bobby Ward. Hello, Bethan Williams. Now... The race to stop the Indian variant. And it is a race. You know, there's a race on, but there, we've talked about this. Uh, oh, Charlotte Roberts, that's amazing. A mental health first aider. That's, I love that phrase, a mental health first aider. Really key, really important. Um, where's my pen gone? I thought I had a pen here. Um, the race to stop the Indian variant. And it is a race, isn't it? It is a race. Um, and I, how do you think the government's going about it? Do you think they're availing themselves? Well, do you think, do you think this is a good thing? My coffee's gone cold. What do you think, guys? Do you think, they're, they're, do you think this sort of surge testing and this bringing forward of the second test is, is sufficient? I mean, I was blown away that I got a message yesterday saying... Booking your second jab. And I'm thinking, 
I must be still four or five weeks away from my second jab. Um, and I went to book it and I could book it straight away and I got in next week, I've got a slot next week, the end of next week. So I think that that is part of them wanting to rush, um, rush the vaccination process. Now, I think the reason this is important is because as they've already said, um, you know, all of our vaccines work, they look like they work successfully against even the Indian variant. It's more about its transmissibility and also the fact that it is, it is making people as ill as some of the other variants. So it's, it's more about spread and it's more about, you know, the fact that if it spreads a lot, then you've got the potential for more variants and all that kind of stuff. Sophie R, sorry, you've been saying this a lot, actually, and I, I keep meaning to mention it. You should react to the Nine Perfect Strangers trailer from the creators of Big Little Lies. We love that. Uh, she, and Nicole Kidman plays a Gwyneth Paltrow goop-inspired wellness. So frustrating it does that. Yeah, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And can you hear? Strimmer Man. Almost feel like it should be a song. I'm a strimmer man. So Sophia, we, we will react to that. We absolutely will react to that. Um, Sally O'Sullivan, you've booked your second vaccine. I should be back now. I should be back now. I think you'll find that I've stopped freezing. Thank you for telling me. We're not frozen now. Morning, everyone. Managed to catch you live. Sorry to hear that Mark hasn't been well. Get well soon, Mark. Thank you, Miss One, Trisha. Apparently, there's a bug with BT. Ah, oh, there you go. That's the bug. Uh, Steve Charles and Mark watched Colour Out of Space. It was really good. Good. Didn't understand it, to be honest. I'm trying to get into Lovecraft books. It, 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 don't try and understand it. I mean, I didn't understand it. You kind of go with the ride, don't you? That's what I like about it. Um... Cinema's open on Monday, absolutely, it's all great news. Uh, I'm just gonna, I've just gotta just do something there. Um, started watching the Madness documentary on YouTube. Oh, what was that? I don't know what that is. Um, so lots of people, who's had their second jab invite? Who's had their second jab invite? Who's booked their, or had their second jab maybe? You had your second vaccine yesterday, Lucy, Lucille Bollen. Um, so yeah, cases of the Indian variant have surged to, four, surged to 400 in London. You know, again, it's the choice language. That's the evening standard. Alarm. Okay, let's unpack a headline. Alarm as cases of Indian variant surge. You know, it's just like, why create alarm? Everyone has been alarmed enough for however long. We know why they create alarm, so you click on it. Um, lots of people had it second. Lots of people had second, already had second jab, just said it. It's Katie Travers, not yet. Should be beginning of June. You might be asked, you, what you might find is you'll be asked sooner now to get it. Uh, Emma Lake, husband, had his second last week. Me tomorrow. Um, I've booked my second jab when I booked my first James McBeer. Yeah, I did too, but I didn't get a text confirming it. And then I got this, just had an invite for the first jab. Okay, Linda, you must be quite young. Had mine in February. Skyly's got my second vaccine on the 20th. Sorry I'm late. Don't be sorry ever. It doesn't matter if you miss us. Just, just Is this variant with people who has had the vaccine? No, this is the point. And, you know, this is, you know, that would be a cause for concern and that would be interesting information. Are we looking at people? Are these cases popping up in people who've already been vaccinated? There does need to be, I think, some transparency on that. You know, tell us who these 400 are. Uh, apparently it's most pronounced in London and in the North West. There's many dis small dispersed clusters in London. It was working with borough councils on a local approach. Uh, the Indian variant is believed to spread faster than the Kent mutation, uh, but it isn't necessarily any more uh, life-threatening. Um, so the government are bringing forward second jabs for people in hotspots. I wonder whether London is maybe a hotspot. Maybe that's why we just gen generically, why not make it a hotspot? Maybe that's why we were offered our second jab sooner. I tell you what I was wondering, did you, have you, has anyone else noticed how they've moved through the age ranges for vaccinations? It gets faster and faster exponentially as they go down the ages. Is that because they're getting less pickup from people or fewer people are turning up? So for example, when they put the call out to everyone over 70, virtually everyone goes because they know that this is a matter of life and death. But when you get to 30, they've done it in a week because so many people just don't think it affects them. Do you think that's do you think that's going on? Yes, Courtney, Nadia is at loose today. Do you think that's going on? Don't forget, you see, homeschooling hasn't finished for us in this house. Homeschooling's finished for most people, but it doesn't happen for us. Um, so many people are missing their second jabs, are they? 
Over 18 is allowed to put current. That's what I mean, though. We seem to be getting fast, seems to be moving faster and faster through the, the younger age ranges, doesn't it? Mika Mack, do you think so? Less pickup, Beryl McNally. Uh, had Pfizer and all went fine, no worries, guys. Melissa Phillips. Uh, Yes, Sarah Sutton, because they don't feed off mainstream media and do their own research. Who's that? The younger or the olders? That and the elderly make up a larger population currently. That's that's a good point. My kids are in their 30s, but don't trust the vaccine and won't have it. Makes me sad, Ruth Blanford. I think it just took longer with older people as they often need taken there by someone. Kim Lakides, that's a good point. Very fair point. Um, Becky Bromfield, you're still homeschooling too. Yeah, and it's joyful. Uh, Marcia Toms, young, may think they are invincible perhaps. Good, good point, Marcia, I think you're right. I'm a bit alarmed with children with the Indian variant. That's why Manchester wants from 16 year olds vague vaccinating. Angela Thompson, yeah. Uh, we love you too, Jacqueline Frost. Um, Jane, Maddie will get her soon, yes. Antonia Schwartz, can 30s book their jab now? I'm going to check if I can get mine now. I think you can, yeah, absolutely. I'm in Essex, Emma Lake. We're the first county uh, to have a vaccine mobile van. We've been ahead all along. That's good. Uh, second jabs here in Oz, hopefully by September. 98% pickup in our area. Uh, Emma Atkins, I'm 44 and still hesitant to have my first as I've, I have been invited. Get it done, get it done. I think a lot of people just refusing to have it. Okay. Um, Okay, well, yeah, there you go, you see. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to hear a lot about this this weekend. I think it's something we need to keep a keen eye on. I do think that's an important uh, question someone asked. What's the nature of the people who are contracting it? Are they in the as yet unvaccinated age range, i.e. young, or are they more worrying still, even though they might not be, it might not be life-threatening? Are, are people who've been vaccinated picking up this variant? That Now, that would be information the government would have to, I'd have thought, really hold close to its chest before it gave us any indication. And we are going to get, aren't we, an announcement on Monday as we come out of into the next stage of lockdown loosening. I'm sure they'll be waiting to look at the data. And if anything's going to be said, for sure, it's going to be said on Monday. Um, so there we go. I just wanted to share this little detail about, we talked briefly about the tragedy of the boy Jordan Banks, who's nine, who was killed uh, by a lightning strike whilst playing on a field in Blackpool. Um, and it's just tragic. And we, you know, we were talking about how it's, you know, it's often something that we sort of throw away, throw around and bandy around as a, as a, as a thing. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's just a tragedy. And what makes the story even more poignant this morning is that his family, uh, whilst they, you know, words cannot explain their heartbreak, He's already, the boy, Jordan Banks, has already helped three other children who needed donations. Um, they donated his organs to children desperately in need. And I, that just made me think again. I mean, I remember back in the sort of 80s, 90s, all this discussion about donation cards and all that kind of stuff. I know that for some people, for religious reasons, it's not, it's not something that they feel can happen. But, you know, I, it was a reminder that, that what is our... What is our sort of donation policy. I can't remember. I mean, I remember it was all about having a card. Was it about, should we have an opt-in or an opt-out donation, um, organ donation? Because I think this is just a, you know, obviously nothing is going to replace their dear boy and nothing can overcome that. And I think one of the issues around organ donation is the idea that one has to make such a difficult medical and slightly dispassionate choice um, it's opt out in Wales, Ellen. Yeah, but to make such a difficult choice at such a grieving and awful moment, I mean, that, that's a swift decision. But of course, it ha these decisions have to be made swiftly in order for the organs to be usable. Um, the rules have changed recently and it's now become opt out. So do, what does that mean? Does that gen genuinely mean that if, say, God forbid, I was struck by uh, a bus or something, uh, I would, they, presumably they have to ask the next of kin, right? Um, or do they just assume? I thought you had to opt out too. Can family opt out for you? Scotland is opt out, opt out of donation. So it's a given that you will be up to be, that your organs could be donated. Yeah, it's now presumed. Oh, right, okay, well, that's, that's good to know. Um, oh, look, and after the youngster's tragic death, it was revealed Liverpool star James Milner had just months earlier praised the little boy for raising more than two and a half thousand by running for a local mental health organisation. Oh, 
it's just everything about that. Just send all of our prayers to the family. And of course, that thing of, of knowing you will have transformed and potentially rescued someone's life with your child's organs. I mean, I can't even, I can't even comprehend that on so many different levels. It's such a sort of miracle of sorts, isn't it? It's a miracle on, in many ways, uh, a miraculous legacy, an absolutely miraculous legacy. He was a generous young boy in life too, Dawn Claricotes, absolutely. Uh, Julie E, I am so very grateful to the person who donated the liver I now have. It's so amazing to do it. Yeah, it really, it really is. Nikki McKenna, they can have all mine. I'm not going to need it. And if it helps others, it's so much worth, so worth it. I mean, I'm the same. God, I mean, if there's anything of any use, take it for God's sake. Um, Aaron Bullimore, love that it's an opt-out system now. Why on earth would anyone uh, want to cling to their dead body is beyond me. I mean, there are some religious reasons. I mean, some, some faiths uh, don't, don't believe in it. I would give my heart just said it's, but it has a leaking valve. Would anyone want it? Well, again, you know, sometimes it's that thing of like my nan wanted to hand her body over to medical research, you know. I think in the end, she decided not to because she'd heard stories of, of just terrible stories of medical students, what have you. But, oh, it's on your driving license, Faith Goodman. Uh, even if you have opted in for donation, the parents can say no and the doctor can decide against it. Right, okay, can decide against the parents saying no. Wow, okay. Uh, Acantha Rain Oak Moon. I've had a donor card since I was 12. That's a long time. Once I'm gone, I don't need these things anymore. Uh, yeah, no, that's... Uh, so there you go. So, you know, that story which we, we covered, the tragedy of the event, and already you can tell within 24 hours, 36 hours, uh, as he did in his short life, raising money and thinking of others, he has manifested that literally in his in his body. Um, quite something. Um, so moving on to Prince Harry. So Prince Harry is back in the limelight because he's spoken on um, a podcast. Uh, the podcast is called Armchair Expert, hosted by Dax Shepherd. Um, you know, I, and someone said earlier, you know, he needs to stop moaning and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I suppose you could, he's just getting on with the new life that he's wanting to live. And I suppose in a sense, he's, he's, he's entitled to talk on whatever platform he wants to. And just because uh, royalty doesn't do that, I, I suppose, can we hit him for it? He's asked to be outside of royalty and what's outside of royalty is a different kind of high profile life. Um, one thing that stood out about Harry, Lucy Heaney, he said that Meghan was the person who advised him to get therapy, yet in a prior podcast, he said William advised him to get help three years before he met Meghan. I hear that, Lucy. Maybe both of them did. Maybe both of them did. Maybe William had the idea or made the suggestion originally, and maybe, you know, um, Meghan sort of knocked it to the back of the net as an idea. Um, it is not all about him, Faith Goodman, I agree. And I think that's that's the issue here. I, I, I suppose one of the things I would say to them, and it's a little bit like, like around Megan's book, is it's perhaps just, get, let's get out of the kind of intensity of this crisis a little bit more before um, before talking. But, you know, I mean, lots of people are, are doing things normally, aren't they? And getting on with just talking about things. I suppose life, everyone's wanting life to get back to normal. I think the, the, the one narrative I get really suspicious of and frustrated by and I think there was someone on GMB this morning saying this, is this idea that he's no longer speaking for himself. Now, within any relationship, that could be true, but it could not be true. I mean, you, but we're not really, you know, no one's best place to make that assessment on someone's behalf. I think if we make that assessment, it's really an assessment being made to fix and solidify a prior feeling we want to feel about something. Do you know what I mean? So it's like we want to think Megan has broken apart the fam family. We want to we want to feel that Megan's talking for him. We want to feel he's being controlled. So if we want that narrative, we will make that fit. And so we we will never know what the nature of their relationship is. So I think to go on morning television and sort of say you know he's being controlled and and mind controlled and he's being told you know what to do and what to say and what to do and all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, there was one part of their story which I thought was quite funny. Um, was where he tells the podcast about how him, him and Megan wanted to pretend they were ordinary people in a supermarket. I mean, again, I think there's a justified question here. 
about whether this is the right time to talk about being an ordinary person. And then there's another question about why does being in a supermarket is why is that man why does that manifest it anyway? And so they wanted to be in a they went to a supermarket and they texted each other. They wanted to meet. This sounds like a bit of a sort of kink, if you ask me. It's, it's like I remember in Modern Family they used to do that thing, the couple, the main family couple, didn't they? Where they'd meet up in a bar on their anniversary every year and pretend they were strangers. So I, I just thought maybe me and Nads should recreate this in the meat aisle of, of Sainsbury's. I'll text her and we'll pretend that we're ordinary people. <laughs> um, and uh, and yes, yeah, so I don't know. So obviously lots of people pouring over this. Um, apparently Harry swears as he asks the host of the uh, podcast, what's it like to take a shitload of drugs and getting shit done and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, from what I hear, from what I hear, yeah, Miranda Rutler, you know, Harry is allowed to speak his truth, obviously, and we as the general public will never know the full story, but some of it feels a bit wrong on some level. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think there's the optics on it. I think the problem is, is that whatever they say and do is always going to be under the, you know, it's going to be a spectacle now, isn't it? And, and that's where, again, I think the Oprah interview's timing was wrong. I think it's done nothing. I think doing it in the first place isn't this wasn't necessarily right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I personally like. There, there's something that tickles me about this idea that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle hooked up in a supermarket. First question I wanted to ask was which supermarket, not not like geographically, but which brand of supermarket. And I'd also like to have known where was Harry in the supermarket when she texted him or. Maybe he texted her. And where was she? And what were they looking at? And what were they considering buying? And were they really, either one of them, entertaining the three for two buying offer? Because I think even unordinary people like Prince Harry and Meghan think about those things. I'd love it to be little. I think you're right there. Uh, who said that? Uh, Acantha Rain Oak Moon. I think you're right. Little would be great. Um, oh, Claire Hemming, Mark, I went out and walked in the grass on Monday afternoon after coffee morning, tagged you in the pic on Insta. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Send it again. Send it again. Or oh, did I see it? Maybe I did see it. Um, send it again. Send it again. Oh, and please, just go out and stand in the grass with your bare feet if you haven't got a foot issue. Um, do they buy own brands to save the pennies, I wonder? That's a good question. Just a few questions then, Mark. Yeah, just a few questions. Just a few questions to ask. And, and I'm not really interested in them. I just want to know where they were, which aisle, what they were perusing, and what they ended up buying. And how did the transaction change? Did they queue up at the till together? Did they do, um, did they do what's it called? The remote till, where you've got no one there? Did they do sort of self-checkout? wonder if they did self-checkout. Oh, Marcia Tom's Little by the Ginger Nuts. See what you did there. That's funny. Um, sending virtual. Ellen is quitting her show. Yes, we, I mentioned that on my Insta stories yesterday. Uh, yeah, pushed or walked? What do you think? Give us, your quick, give us a quick hit. Quick hit. Pushed or walked? Pushed or walked? Was Ellen pushed or walked? She's calling it a concerted and targeted misogynistic attack. Once again, you know, sometimes I, as I get older, one of the things I've learned is you just have to bail out of things where you can't prove either way. Because all you'll end up doing is getting into a row with people. Uh, pushed, pushed for sure. The vast majority of people feel pushed. Jennifer Kando walked. Christine Bett walked. Yeah. I mean, my problem with all of these things is often I'm always, I will always, I mean, I've done it with Megan, to be fair. I always want to know whether a prejudicial treatment is there at, at first. So, you know, with, with Ellen, my mum's gay, obviously, and I often wonder with Ellen, you know, to what extent would this be happening with her if she wasn't a very successful, outspoken um, lesbian? And, you know, I always want to put that, I always have to push things through that filter first to sense it. So the fact that she says that, you know, one has to sort of think, okay, well, maybe there could be some of that. But it, you know, we'll know but the point is we'll never know. We'll never know for sure. I think it was a case of jump or be pushed. Uh, Account the rain. And you know, the vast majority of you say say pushed. Sally Griffin environment, toxic environment is a toxic environment. Sky loose. Yeah, maybe she just wanted to call it a day. Well, look, guys, have that Friday feeling. Keep the Friday feeling. Enjoy your Friday feeling. And uh, look out for Mental Marky. He's going to be popping up again. Um, and. Have a lovely, lovely rest of the day. Something will be landing on the channel later today, a vlog of some form. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you haven't. 
um, and subscribe if you haven't, and you will be notified as to when we are going live. Nads will be here for Coffee Morning tomorrow. And um, stay safe, San Diego, and don't, don't mention Nutella to anyone. And certainly, I hope no one has sent any to me.